Malchus on the Tzad Kedusha would be a person who's stiff-necked, but for Kedusha. So a person says, you want to come out and do something that's not going to be good for you, like go to the bars and watch the game? He says, no, I'm not going to do that. That we're Am Kishay Oyrif. That Klal Yisrael is a stiff-necked people. So stiff-necked could either be for something bad. Oh, why don't you get out of bed? Let's go. No, I can't. Like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I feel like dirt. I feel like nothing. That's offer on the side of the Sitra Achra. But offer on the side of Kedushas, yes, I am stuck with my values. I will not bow down to that idol. I will not eat that shrimp dinner, even though the company is telling me that you have to go and be more integrated within the company and go out for corporate dinners. I will not do that. I'm an Am Kishay Oyrif, from the Am Kishay Oyrif, and I won't give up on that value. So that's Malchus. So when a person has, a ch uh, let's say, some challenge in, in depression or a challenge in Atzlus, so one of the ways to get over that is to summon the power of Malchus. And one of the things that Rabbeinu Arizal and the Rashash and all the Tzadikim have been, Chimar and the Yamdar Kech have been giving us very practical ways to do that, is to think of that name in your head when that struggle's going on. Think of that name, Aleph Dal and Nun Yud. Think of that name in your mind and derive strength and power from that name. See those letters. Now, it doesn't have to be anything physical. We're not talking about physically seeing. But if I were to tell you right now, think about a pink elephant, you could see a pink elephant. You could imagine, oh, and that elephant is there. It exists. So instead of thinking of pink elephants, I'm sorry that now I put pink elephants in your head, but now think of Aleph Dal Nun Yud. It's a good alternative, and much better. Even pink. Yeah. Even in pink, Aleph Dal Nun Yud, if, if that's what you want. We're okay with that. Uh, classic is black fire on white fire, but pink is also fine. Uh, that is something that we do in our meditations. We focus on letters made out of black fire, which is a kind of awesome image. And then on white fire, and the white fire is this huge urea, like all of the heavens become this white fire, and then you see black fire letters. You see an expanse of white as far as the eye can see, huge, massive expanse, and then you see the letters. Like that. There's such a thing as when Sadiqim have certain alias neshamas and they see things, there's such things as seeing letters. So it's important to begin that process of getting ourselves used to thinking about letters. You know, we look at them all day. Chazal say the letters that Oisius Makimais, that Hebrew letters make you wise, they give you chokhmah. That's why it's a very big thing by tzaddikim. They always had the letters in front of them. They're always, they always like having a text open. They like looking inside. They say, no, they say, no, no, let's see it inside. They want to see the oisius. They want to be involved. Ichimai knows exactly what's going on. He knows his siddur back and forwards. He knows, the, he knows it all about that. Why does he keep flipping and looking at the letters? Because the letters themselves, seeing the images, seeing the letters, are machkimais, increase chachma. So when a person goes through a challenge, a struggle, to picture and visualize those letters, specifically a struggle in depression and laziness, to help get him going. So I'm going to read a little bit here, as we're going deeper into Malchus, as we're getting ready for Malchus Sheba Malchus, and then ultimately the gift like the Belzeruv, the Frida Belzeruv said, that Lifne me, we sing this through the whole sphere. Amr Rabbi Akiva, Lifne me, Atim Etahara, Mim Etaresham. Lifne me, Atim Etahara, Mim Etaresham. You know, that just goes on. I get flashbacks just thinking about that, singing that for like 12 hours straight. Oy, Lifne me, Atim Etahara, Mim Etaresham. It gets to a good place. I live, maybe. And sing the tzaddikim just... So there's many, many shtikotayers why we sing that song. It's very nice. 
But what is that with Lag Ba'omer and the Sphira? So the Belzerov said, Lifnei me, at the Mitahar, before me. So simple, the simple meaning of the words is, before whom? Before whom? It's like a question. At the, before whom are you purified? Umi Mitar And who does purify you? Avichim Sheba Shemaim, your Father in heaven. So the Friedrich Belzerov said, Lifnei me, before me. Me is Mem Yud. Me is Gematria 50. Leaf name me, before me, before the 50th, at the you guys have to do the work. That's the 49 days of the Oymer. Leaf name me, before me, at the Metaharim. Umi, but once you get to me, once you get to the 50th day, Metar Me, the day itself, the 50, me Metar Once you get to 50, that's already a Matana. The beginning is all the work. We're still in the Savoida, all the way until Malchus, Sheba Malchus. And then once we get to me, Metaraschem, then Shavuos itself is going to come and we're going to feel this tremendous or. And back to our child who doesn't know how to ride his bike and you give him that push. That's Pesach night. And then he falls and he has to go and he has to try again. And then all of a sudden he's riding the bike on his own. Yeah, but who's really letting him ride the bike on his own? Is there any such thing as, as his own? That's the 50th day. That's, the, that's Shavuos. Hashem says, I want you, though, to purify yourselves that you're ready. The end of that purification is overcoming depression, is overcoming laziness, and completely being makabel. Hashem, I am your faithful Evid. Ani avdecha ben amosecha. I'm your faithful Evid. I'm an Evid Hashem. Moshe avdi. The kol beisi neman. That Moshe Rabbeinu was Bekol Beisi Neman, which means that he had keys to Hashem's palace. I always notice that many tzaddikim like to have keys. The Chimar always has all the keys. There's such a thing as they need to get in certain rooms. He's, he's holding like the key chain. Chain, I mean like, you know, those giant rings of keys. All access to all the vaults. Because when a person has all the keys, it means there's a certain trust. We trust you to have the keys. If somebody lived in some gewaldic mansion, some billionaire lived in some gorgeous place, and you know he's got rooms within rooms within rooms within rooms, and these are treasure troves and secrets, and, and he says, here's all the keys, it means that he must trust you. And you could take people into different places. So Moshe should have been had all the keys to Hashem's palace which means that Moshe Rabbeinu knew all the secrets. All of these days now is we're getting more keys, getting more keys. To be an Evid, Neman means I'm totally Hashem, whatever you want. Like we said yesterday from Rabbeinu Yoyna, there's no such thing as an Evid Hashem that says, Hashem, I'll do everything for you except one thing. He's totally Pyrrhic all. That's a complete remover of the all, a removal of the all. Hashem, I'll do every single thing for you. So now the Rebbe is going to teach us something. How do I get and increase the ability to move away from the Ra that's trying to get down Malchus to be misgaber on Atzlus and Atzvus? Ki kol inyina Atzlus ve'atzvus, the whole idea of depression and laziness. The Hainamashim is oyre eitzel la'odem ha'argoshes Atzlus ve'atzlus hi be'etzem or l'ki ha'shayach l'midas ha'malchus. There's an energy that comes into a person, and if it's not used properly, it turns into depression. Why did that energy come in in the first place? To actually wake you up. But if a person doesn't have the vessels of Malchus, then it turns into depression. This is Bechlal, the whole idea of Klippus. God is always giving you a light. We spoke with this from the beginning of the sphere. Hashem gives you a light of Chesed, which means to receive tremendous light from Hashem and tremendous pleasure and, and Taiva, but for good things. But if the Klippus come and they take that light, the animal soul comes and takes that light. 
what happens is that I start feeling that I want to unify with unhealthy things. I want to take pleasure in unhealthy pleasures. I want to bond with unhealthy things. So the light came in, and it's very, very good, but because the clip is covering, it's like stealing the light. That's one of the things of the Koychus of Raz. They try to steal your energy. They try to steal the light. And we want to reclaim. We want to pull the light back. Because everything is from Hashem. We want to pull the light back to its pureness. So now, this, that the light that would come into Malchus, which would be of tremendous light that Hashem is here in this world, and I'm His faithful servant, and I'm living with Hashem, and the Beis HaMikdash is built, and it's Shabbos Kodesh, in place of all of that clarity that all I want is you, Hashem. That a person, instead of that light, making it clear that Hashem is right here, it brings a person a feeling of helplessness and hope and hopelessness. The cl- and it's, instead of having the feeling of, like we said, that Malchus is the power of earth, but earth used properly, I know you're here, Hashem. No matter how dark it gets, I see you, you're right here, I'm clear in that. I'm stiff-necked for good things. Instead of that, it means I'm stuck and I can't get out of it. So you always have to know when Hashem sends some type of situation where a person is feeling that the chesed has fallen. Chesed fallen, we said, is being in love with unhealthy things. Gavura fallen is being afraid of inappropriate things. Tiferes fallen is instead of beautifying Hashem, making oneself just glorifying oneself, but not for nothing else than just oneself. Not to be beautiful for God. To be beautiful to bring Hashem's name to the world just for total selfish reasons. And Netzach, victory, but for no other purpose than I'm the victor. And Hoid, to, to acknowledge the greatness of non-godly things. And then Yesoid, which we said is to bond with unhealthy things, to really bond, a total unification. And then Malchus is depression. So whenever I see any of those things in my life, what I have to do is realize God was sending a very, very big light. The light must have fallen, but I need to reclaim what that thing is. So if a person is feeling down, I have to realize there's an amazing opportunity to have the light of Malchus, a major light a huge opportunity. And if there's a feeling of unhealthy fear, fear the boogeyman, it means that really that is a light of Gevura, which I need to reclaim. And this is the final week in Malchus where you could literally reclaim everything until we get to the last day, which is Shabbos, on Malchus, Shiva Malchus. You can reclaim everything. You could fix everything. The last day, the last second, and it's Shalash before Shavuos. The last second before Shavuos, you could reclaim Malchus, Shiva Malchus, on the day of Malchus, and Shalashidis, Ravan the Ravan, everything is, those last few minutes. So I don't just, you know, rush out of Shalashidis. Make Shalashidis very, very moving. Shalashidis is very, very powerful to reclaim everything. There's another code word for Malchus, and that's Emuna. God, you're with me down here. That's what we said. The name for Malchus is Aleph Dal Nun Yud. The name for Malchus is Shechina. It's God's Shechin. He's present right here. I feel your presence. I know that there's a plan. That's all Malchus. I see the king, a Melech. I see he's organizing things. He's running things. There's a king behind all this. You ever been to a, let's say, an event, and you get there and you feel like no one's really leading this whole thing, and it's kind of what they call Hefker? A free-for-all. A free-for-all? It's like, you know, you showed up and people, and, you know, and like the energy's very not 
contained, it's very dispersed, it's very scattered. Sometimes, you know, these hippie festivals are like that. You get there and it's like, so who's running this thing? Like, who knows, man? Like, yeah, who knows? <laughs> so there's a feeling like, so, yeah, somebody took my 250 bucks, you know, to get into this play. Where's he? We don't know. So that's not good. Or even you have a situation. Someone's organizing a group of people for a project, but you get there and it's like, who's running the meeting? Oh, we don't know. So there's a feeling like there's nothing that's guiding this. The energy is very disparate. It's not unified. When you have a melech, the whole idea of the melech is that he is guiding the people. When the melech is strong, when the melech is revealed in all of his grandeur, a good king, there's a feeling like everything has structure. The coins are minted. Everything is running properly. There's, there's money in the system. There's the, econ the economy is doing well. Everything is moving properly. There's a melech. Everything's being guided and run properly. So when you have a powerful activation of malchus in yourself, and you see that Hashem is running everything, there's no situation that's, we don't know. Something happens. Like, so where's the paramedic? We don't know. There's no such thing as just random. There's a melech guiding everything. In a world of malchus, a person stubs their toe. God, there was a purpose for this. I see that there's a plan. Everything is happening. It's all guided. The exact opposite of that is depression, is atzvus. I don't know. There's no, there's no rhyme and reason. Laziness. I don't want, I just don't, I, I don't have motivation. I don't know why I'm doing things. That's all the world when the light of Malchus was stolen by the dark side. That's why we say in our tradition that there's no worse character trait than depression. That is the worst. That is the worst of the worst. There's nothing worse than that. Getting out of that is the biggest thing possible. It's also the biggest light. Because once a person gets out of that, they reclaim the Malchus. They reclaim God's sovereignty in the world. They reclaim themselves. They reclaim everything. Everything now has a plan. God is with me. There's a movement forward. And in that place, there's no room for depression. There's no room for laziness. Everything is going. There's a king. It's being guided. I'm in this. Yes? So we're supposed to go down. Because if, we're, if we are just straight or up, we're not going to reveal the biggest light. So we don't need to go into depression in order to reveal the malchus. You could have the, that. The depression is only when the dark side grabs a hold of that light and pulls it into atzvahs. But we hope that a person sees God guiding the world in all of the situations, and he's there. And even when things get challenging, and things are olam hazadik, this world, you're going to work, you're getting your paycheck, you're paying bills, you're making moves. He sees God is running everything, even though he tried to do a deal, and for some reason something didn't happen. Or the girl said no on the date. Whatever's happening, God is moving everything forward. He's in it the whole time. But yes, when we fall from that and fall into atzvus and fall into depression, one of the most powerful things is to reclaim the malchus. It's called bidina malchus. To rebuild up malchus after a person fell into depression and fell into, into bad places. If you can reclaim malchus, that is the fixing of everything. That's, what, that's things that like real good therapists are dealing with. Real people who go into the kishkas and, and people who are in dark places, marshkar places, lo'aleinu, and you get pulled out of that place and you rebuild up from that place. The amuna is so deep because you realize God was even in that place as far down as it went. These are things like when people get, God forbid, divorced, or they go through trauma, and they, they, they go into dark places, and then they rebuild themselves out of that darkness. That's called binyan amalchus. Rebuilding out of very broken places where the klipas stole the malchus. That's called the kingdom of the no good one. The tale of the lost princess of being stolen. The whole story of the last princess about this, Rabbi Nachman's last princess, 
is the stealing where the Shekhinah, where the Malchus went to the palace of the no good one and was stolen and now everything is depressed and she has to be rescued. All these stories and Lord of the Rings and all, it all comes from us. We have to rescue the princess. We have to fix the Malchus, bring her back to her father's home. But now with a much greater grandeur that she's, she's, she realized that there was a plan the whole time. That this is the, called the Binyan Malchus. And it climaxes with Kabbalah Satayra. The climax is that God was here the whole time. And the greatest gift is that He never left us. We should be zeched this. Amen. Amen. Okay, Rabbi Yisrael, wonderful day. Kol Tuvah, have one more shir tomorrow. Before